Your hundred sons and so many all are killed now. What you want to see more? Then he told, what can I do? I am blind. Blind? Oh, at once come with me. And in the midnight, he took the trust with him and Gandhari. No, Kunti Devi. Now you can come into Eid Madhya Dekla, not Kunti. And he took them in the way to Haridwar and more he went, more Rishikesh, more dense forest. And there he told Dhritras, take your mind from your body. And mind? Take soul from mind. Oh, to soul. And so, so your soul be go to Krishna. Forget everything. And in the meantime, after seven days, fire came. Forest fire. Huh? Forest, Forest fire. fire came. And he was burned to ashes. Both. And they were huh? liberated. liberated. Because they have given their soul and mind to Krishna. There are so many more teachings. Kapil Devuti. So I want to tell some sweet pastimes of Krishna also. So I am coming very, very. You should know. No. Like Sarupya, Bhakuntiya, Nigati. Not. Even Arjun Pandavas and Draupadis are uh, doing austerities in Radha Kund. Whether they have attained or not, Braj Bhakti or Braj Bhas or not, it is in power. So, what to tell them? Very high, you are very lucky. That a desire has come. Huh? Something very strange. Do you want to go to heaven? Anyone? No. Do you want to have liberation? Mukti? Anyone? No. And after that, do you want to be the associates of Ramchandra? No. So one, one, one. <laughs> and do you want to be the king of Krishna in Dwarka? No. no. And do you want to be in Vrindavan like friends? No. no. Like Mother Jasoda and Nanda Baba, only like Gopi. The next level is of Ramya. So you are very fortunate to hear all these things and try to fix your aim and object of your sadhana. This is a very good success in your life. You should think all very, very fortunate you. But one thing I request you. If you want to attend this, don't criticize anyone by now. Never in any way try to cut that tongue. Your, your tongue, your sudo off. Try to <laughs> And punish that tongue. If my once, but if you are set by this, oh, Satusang Namakritan Bhagavasraman Mathura Vasi Murti Sattva Yasiman Satam Satana Sest E Panchang Krishna Prem Janmaye Panchara. Very surely you will have. You will have. Now, you should try to follow my instructions. Not my instruction, my Guru Parampara instruction and instruction of Srila Vyasadeva 
And she was also a, a devotee of the Supreme Lord. So she told that if you want to fulfill your desire, then you will have to satisfy the Supreme Lord. And Dhruva Maharaj, he uh, asked, where can I locate him? Where can I find him? She told that many rishis, many saints, they go to the forest and they absorb themselves very deeply in meditations and yoga. And there they gain darshan of the Supreme Lord. So at that moment, Dhruva Maharaj, with very great determination, he immediately left the palace and he began to go into the forest. Along the way, as he came towards the forest, Sri Narad Muni, the great sage, um, the great spiritual master, as Srila Gurudev told us, of so many great devotees in the universe, he suddenly appeared there in front of Dhruva Maharaj and he asked him, where are you going? Oh, he told, I'm going to the forest. I want to uh, find, I want to see the Supreme Lord Himself, Bhagavan. So Narada Muni, at that time, he took compassion on Dhruva and he gave him instruction. And he also gave, imparted a particular mantra to him. So at that time, Dhruva Maharaj very obediently accepted the order of Narada Muni who told him that he must chant this mantra with great faith and great determination. And now, Dhruva Maharaj went into the forest. So, he located himself in a very secluded place, nearby to a, a very beautiful stream, very purified and sanctified and quiet place. And now Dhruva began to engage in very intensive austerities as he was chanting this mantra. And he began to abstain from eating even he was only eating leaves from the trees at one point. Then gradually, gradually he reduced to only drinking water and then reduced that to only drinking water a few drops after a few days. Finally he stopped even drinking water. Then Dhruva Maharaj began to only take air, breathing. And gradually, gradually, by the process of breath control, pranayam, oh, he uh, even withdrew his breathing processes and at that point, when Dhruva Maharaj, after six months of doing these intense austerities and completely absorbed in chanting his mantra, uh, the whole universe was feeling even choked by his austerity. So suddenly at that time, the Supreme Lord, Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayan, he appeared there in front of Dhruva Maharaj. And when he appeared in front of Dhruva. Suddenly Dhruva Maharaja's meditation broke and he fell in doing pranams, full obeisances before the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. And at that time he rose up and all of his body was trembling and he felt all ecstatic symptoms to see the Supreme Lord before himself. And now he tried to speak something but he could not because he was just a little boy and he was so overwhelmed. But Lord Vishnu took his conch shell, uh, his shanka, and he touched the head of uh, Dhruva. And now Dhruva began to offer very beautiful prayers, very eloquent, poetical uh, mantras and prayers to the Supreme Lord. And at that time, Lord Vishnu, he told to Dhruva Maharaj, now you should ask me for any benediction. I will grant your heart's desire. So Dhruva Maharaj, although he had come into the forest with this intense desire to gain a material kingdom, great vast wealth and power, uh, but when he saw Lord Vishnu, his heart melted and actually he lamented very deeply within his heart that I was motivated by such a material desire and I worshipped you for this useless material desire now that I have seen your lotus feet now that I have seen your beautiful form, oh, I realize that I don't want anything. I only want to serve your lotus feet. Uh, and real, I also realize that my attempt to gain all of these material things was just like searching for little broken pieces of glass. But now I realize that while I was searching for these little pieces of glass, oh, I have found a very valuable jewel. I have found your divine lotus feet. So in this way, Dhruva Maharaj told Lord Vishnu, Swamin Kritartosmi Varamna Jati. I am fully satisfied. I don't want any kind of benediction. 
But then Lord Vishnu, he insisted and he told Dhruva, no, you have come to me with this desire. I must fulfill your desire. And Dhruva Maharaj had to accept uh, a kingdom greater than his grandfather. For 36,000 years, he had to become a king and ruler within this universe. But then Lord Vishnu gave him the benediction that after that time period, oh, then he would be able to attain his eternal position. And within this very universe, he would be able to rule an entire Vaikuntha planet, a spiritual planet, Dhruva Loka, which is the pole star within the universe. And there Dhruva Maharaj would reside, and Lord Vishnu would be there, residing on the same planet. So he would attain this Salokya liberation, to live on the same planet as the Supreme Lord. So in this way, Dhruva Maharaj, by his great uh, austerities, and by following the order of his Gurudev, Narada Muni, and following his, his instruction to chant the mantra which he gave to him, oh, in this way, Lord Vishnu came and he revealed himself to Juva. But the point that is to be learned from this Upakya, from this instruction, is that one should never approach the Lord with any kind of material desire whatsoever. It should be anya vilashita shunyam, devoid of any other desires, and only favorable, anakulyena krishna dushilanam, only favorable to the Supreme Lord for His satisfaction. But if one approaches, then you will run this risk as Dhruva Maharaj had done. Your eternal uh, association with the Lord and attainment of uh, His eternal abode, it will be delayed. And you will have to accept so many temporary material benedictions within this world. So Dhruva Maharaj is listed as a bhakta within the category of the devotees of the Lord. But he had some material desires, sakam bhakta. So he worshipped the Lord with these desires. And in this way, gradually, his desires became removed by the power of the Supreme Lord and the benedictions of his Guru Dev. Like this Katha, you should know that through by mantra given by his Guru, and he received that position. Why you cannot? More better superior mantra are with you, Brahma Gayatri, and then Guru Mantra, Guru Gayatri, Gaur Mantra, Gaur Gayatri. Oh, Gopal Mantra, essence of all the mantra, and more. Come, And moreover, you are Harinam. So, why you cannot attend? I think, oh, he took six, uh, six months. And very easily chanting and remembering, and if you are doing very strictly your mantra with great honor, you must be successful. But only thing that you should not want any worldly thing, never and never. Only that, like Chaka, want the water of Manishwati Natchatra. So you want only Radha Dasya. Not if Krishna coming and giving you, oh, take this benediction, that benediction, that benediction, refuse. We will die, we will not take anything but yourself. After that, Puranjan Upakhyan, very good Upakhyan. Nara told to one Maharaj. Prachin Abhaj. Prachin Bhai. Far Bhai Rathya. And then, Bharat Charitra. How Bharat was? He left his kingdom in his young age, like a stool and urine, and he came to the forest to meditate and serve Krishna. He reached up to how? But what became? He was attached to any dear baby and he lost his thing. But you, in brief,
Very brief. <laughs> So, all of you may know that present day India is called Bharat Maharaj because it's named after the great king Bharat. So, Bharat Maharaj, at the half point of his lifetime, he gave our ideal example and he renounced everything. His, renounce, his renunciation was very natural and he went to the Himalayas and was performing bhajan there. His bhajan had attained such a high stage. Not Himalaya. Not the Himalaya. In Gandaki River. In Gandaki, where Salad Gram. So, what a level of bhajan he had attained. It's described that his heart was like, an, like a lake of bhakti ras, and inside that he would drown. As he would remember Krishna, tears would come from his eyes, his voice would choke, all the hairs on his body would stand on end. So, his bhajan had reached such a high level. So, one day, very quickly, one female deer, doe, who was heavily pregnant, she was running from the chase of a tiger. And as she left her body on the side of the river, the baby deer was born and was floating down the river. And with her eyes, she was looking, Oh, Bharat Maharaj, what type of son are you? You cannot even have mercy on my son. So Bharat Maharaj, he picked the baby deer out of the water and began to protect it. So he, even, he began picking pieces of grass and feeding to the deer. He began nourishing, protecting. Nighttime he would sleep with it. In fact, he became so much absorbed in contemplation and with affection to the deer, his meditation and sudden bhajan was completely destroyed. When he'd sit in meditation, the deer would come and talk him with his soft horns. So Bharat Maharaj, his mind was completely attached to the deer. <coughs> so one day, the baby deer, she saw the, the big deer running in the forest. He left Bharat Maharaj ran to the forest, Bharat Maharaj became completely mad in lamentation. So, be quick. So, even Bharat Maharaj was looking at the moon. The moon is called Sasadala. Oh, moon is very fortunate. Look, my son is there. Oh, earth, all austerities you have performed. The footprints of my son are on you. Thinking like this, Bharat became mad. Bharat Maharaj forgot about death. The death did not forget about Bharat Maharaj. Yesham Sam. Krishna says, Yam Yam Bhavismaram Avam. Whatever you think at the time of death, that is your next destination. So Bharat Maharaj, at the time of death, he was completely infatuated with a deer, and he remembered a deer. As a result, he took birth as a deer. Guru Mahat said, Bharat Maharaj made one mistake, he took three more births. But how many mistakes we are making every day, every month? So Bharat Maharaj, as a result of his bhajan, he was not an ordinary deer. He could remember the mistakes he made and he lamented. He would never associate with other deer and at a young age he ran away from his mother and lived in the, the, near the ashram of the Sadhus and was always hearing Harikata and he waited when this body would be finished. So next birth, he took birth in a Brahmin family. So Bharat Maharaj was very careful not to make the same mistake again. His father was a very high class Brahmin his father very tried very hard to educate him in all the types of smarta karma. But Bharat Maharaj said, no, this life is only bhajan. His father tried very hard to educate him, but Bharat Maharaj ignored all that his, and practiced Hari Bhajan. So, his father left the body a great disappointment. His nine brothers mistreated Bharat Maharaj very greatly. They never used to feed him anything, they never used to give him any cloth. They used to give Bharat Maharaj the burnt vegetables from the bottom of the pot, the old rice, but Bharat Maharaj ate everything considering it nectar. So, one day, Bharat, they used to put Bharat Maharaj in charge of guarding the fields. So, Bharat Maharaj was very happy they're doing bhajan. So, Jad Bharat. Jad, Jad means inert, because he would pretend to be mad. Isn't it? Like useless, Jad Bharat. One day, the king of Sindhudesh, Rahugana, he was going from there, going towards where the Ganga enters into the Bay of Bengal. He went to see Kapil Rishi. So that time... Bengal? <laughs> so... Uh, oh, no, let, let him. So, 
Bottom line is the king Rahuganath was being carried on his palanquin, and one of the carriers, he was injured, so they needed a spare tire. Oh, they saw Bharatmaraj was very powerful, very strong, and by force, even though Bharatmaraj was so exalted, he was not fit for that work, by force they made him carry the palanquin. The palanquin, the Jad Bharatmaraj, he never gave up his character. Oh, all are related to Krishna. So when he would walk on the ground, he would see the ants, and he would move here and there, to side to side. Inside Rahuganath cracked his head on the top of the palanquin. What's going on now? Oh, Bada, oh, foolish fellow. Are your carriers not cooperating with you? Maybe they are not walking correctly, but you are okay. And he chastised him very strongly. Bada Maharaj was silent. He just tolerated. Again, again, they were walking, and again, Bada Maharaj, Jad Bada, was moving to avoid the ants. Rahuganath became very angry. Oh, fool, are you mad? Are you dead despite the life in your body? Don't you know who I am? I punish you. I am king. I will punish you like Ramaraj punishes the sinful. So Bharatmaraj was completely undisturbed and smiling. He said, O oh king, what you have said in sarcasm is definitely true. More <laughs> O oh king, what you have said in sarcasm is definitely true. Isn't it? You have said, oh, I am experience, you are experiencing great difficulty carrying this palanquin. This is your rubbish. I am not experiencing any difficulty because I am not carrying the palanquin. This body is carrying the palanquin. Therefore, I have nothing to do with this body, nor this palanquin, nor the present situation I am in. You know nothing about the difference between the soul and the body. O king, the body is not fat, nor thin, nor stout, nor black, nor white, nor anything else that you have no king, said, no sarkin, nothing. You said, therefore happiness, distress, mental fatigue, material desires, death, birth, these are all come from the material mind. But I have nothing to do with any of this. O oh, king, you have said, I am king and you are servant. Is this true? But I say this is a temporary situation. And soon, maybe I will be king and you will be servant. And you have said that I am dead despite living. But King, I may let you know this is a fact for every living being in this world. Everyone's body is dead and it's only alive because of the presence of the Jivatma. O King, you have said that I am mad despite living. But you should know that I am not mad. I am perfected, liberated, soul, servant of the Supreme Lord. And if you think I am mad and punishing you, what's the use of your punishment? Like beating a dead horse is no benefit. O King, you have given me some nice instructions. What should I do? Shall I carry your palanquin again? So Bada, the king of Huganath became very afraid. He leapt down from his palanquin and fell up weeping at the feet of Bada Maharaj. Jal -bada. Jal -bada. He said, I am not afraid of anything. I can even fight with Lord Shiva. I mean, even fight with death. I am not afraid of anything. I am only afraid of one thing. That is committing offense to the lotus feet of Vaishnavas and Brahmins. Please forgive me. So very quickly, beautiful instructions Bharat Maharaj gave to King Rahul. He told that, who are you? Who are you? Uh, Bharat Maharaj, Rahul had asked, who are you? You are moving in a disguised form as if to examine others. I cannot understand who you are. Are you Kapil Dev? Are you Vishishta? Are you? And many names he gave. Atam Rishi, are you this, are you that? So Bharat Maharaj said, well, maybe you know me. My name is Bharat. Oh, My I'm name was Bharat. Bharat. Before your four yes, corners, were the emperor of whole universe, and then he was oh, same as you are, and then Shraddha came. Sometimes Gurudev and the Vaishnavas will explain their past lifetime, their life history to us, and we will get so much inspiration and faith in them. <coughs> Otherwise, we think ordinary person is not good for us. So. But Rahuganath Maharaj said, I cannot understand what you say. You say there is no relationship between the body and the soul. But I think this is not true. Like if you have a pot of kitchen, a pot of rice, the fire heats the pot, the pot boils the water, and the water boils the rice. So I think in the same way there is a relationship between the body and the mind, and the body and the soul. The body suffers, the mind experiences pain and pleasure, and then the Atma thinks, I am happy, I am suffering. So then Bharat Maharaj, he said, O King, you are speaking very foolishly. You have no experience whatsoever. Don't you know this, the only cause of happiness and distress? 
The only cause which causes the living entity to move through the 8,400,000 different species of life, there is only one cause, that is the mind. The mind is like an uncontrolled elephant. Therefore, he drags the living entity through the different species of life. Therefore, King, you should try to control this stupid mind. This mind is very wicked, very difficult to control. Even a yogi, like a hunter who captures a deer and ties him very tightly, in the same way, even a yogi who has controlled the mind, he will never trust the mind. Therefore, like, an, like a lamb, when the wick is too long or too short, it gives insufficient light or much smoke is produced. But when the lamp is perfectly trimmed, that same lamp is the cause of illumination. In the same way, Bhattu Maharaj, when this mind is attached to the three modes of nature, the mind is the cause of repeated birth and death. And the same mind, when attached to the feet of, Harikuna Vaishnava, that same mind is the cause of liberation. So Bharat Sarahuganad Maharaj said, Gurudev, everything you're saying is very nice. I cannot understand, I cannot realize it. So at that time, Rahuganad Maharaj said, of course, you can, there's only one way you can re realize that. Why not? Rahuganad Maharaj. Rahuganad Tapasana Jati Na Chakyan Deva Maharaj. Grihadvan Na Chanti Sanayi Vajalakya Surya Bina Mahapada Rajo Vishakam. Famous verse. O oh, King, this, the Atma cannot be realized by so much Ikja, means deity worship, tapasya, or by tapasa, sorry. or by very much austerities. Which type of austerities? Jalagda Surya. Jalagda means some yogis in the winter time, they submerge themselves up to the neck in the freezing cold waters and do meditation. Or they sit themselves amongst the panchagni. Four fires on either side, and in the midday sun, they meditate. All Rahuganath, the Atma cannot be realized by austerities, by worship, by mundane reading of the Vedas, nor by your own efforts. Then how the Atma can be realized? Bina Mahapada Rajogashikam. There is only one way you can realize King. Follow the feet of a pure Vaishnava and take his foot dust and smear it on the top from head to toe. Then you can understand the Atma. Otherwise, you can never understand. There are two teachings, especially so many teachings, but two from Bhartupakha. Don't be attached to anything. You can do your duties only, but don't be attached to anything in this world. Even to your wife, your husband, children, or animals like dogs and cat. cats and <laughs> otherwise you have to come in the form of cat and dogs. Even. So don't. And one thing more: at the time of death, Bhart was remembering only dear, 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 where he went, and so. He came in the form of deer. So if at the time of day you are meditating Radha and Krishna and his associates, associates why you can be like that? You must be. Very easily you can be. So from beginning, now you should try to always remember Krishna and his associates. Very easily you can be the associates of Krishna. Then, but Maharaj Parikshit has something here, feeling that I have done some mistake, I have done some aparad on Rishi, Shamik Rishi. So knowing this, Sudhya Goswami said, don't be hopeless or don't think like so. Even a Durachari, characterless, drunkard and useless person like Ajami. He only called his son, he has kept his son name Nara. And what became? He went to Vaikuntha. So don't only listen Hari Katha. And by this you will be liberated and you will have Golo Vrindavan. 
So, in grace of Prabhu, what is it? Radha Kant Prabhu. Can you tell Ajami? Not? Yes, yes. Very easy. In six candles from Bhagavatam, the story of Ajamil is there. Ajamil was born and raised in a very strict Brahminical family, and he was wedded according to Vedic injunction. He was a good Brahmin. He followed rules and regulations and performed a religious life. At some point in his life, due to misfortune, he looked upon a scene of sudras enjoying sexual enjoyment and welling up in his heart came a desire, a lusty desire for himself to enjoy outside of marriage. So he started to develop a relationship with a prostitute and enjoyed with her, eventually leaving his wife, his children, his dharma, his brahminical duties, and became very, very degraded. Always with her, always enjoying and having also children with her. So, towards the end of his life, he had one son named Narayan. Because he was raised in Vedic culture as a Brahmin, he was performing different religious activities. He named his children according to names of Vishnu and Narayan. And being very attached to his son, at the time of death, as we're hearing, what we do during our life, we automatically begin to remember. Just like a playback in a movie, you go back and remember everything that happened during your life, especially those things which are very important to you, that you're attached to, that you have love and affection for, those persons in your life. So, as devotees, if we're always developing love and affection and attraction for pure Vaishnavas and Krishna, then automatically, without endeavor, we will think of those things at the time of death. But in this case, Ajamil having left his sadhan and bhajan and became very degraded, automatically at the time of death, what was he thinking of? He was only thinking of his family and his son. So he called out to his one son, Narayan. He saw three Yamdu, where the Karan group, and he fell. And then he called that one, automatically came, Narayan Narayan. At the time of death, for those who deserve punishment according to the law of karma, the Yamadutas, the messengers of Yamaraj will come, they're very fearful. So he was very fearful and he called out, Narayan, Narayan, my son, my son, save me, save me. So the instruction here is that even though he was not calling Narayan Vishnu, he was calling Narayan his son, but because he was calling without envy or aparad, it was called Namabhas, or the semblance of the holy name. And immediately all of his karmas, all of his simple activities that pop in his life were destroyed from that one calling of Narayan. And at that time, also the Vishnu Dudas came. Because the Yamadudas were trying to take him. But the Vishnu Dudas came and prohibited them. Said, you cannot do this. So a, a big argument ensued between the Vishnu Dudas, the messengers of Lord Vishnu who come and take the fortunate soul at the time of death to Vaikuntha Loka. And Yamaraj, Yamadudas, who take the fallen, sinful person down to the hellish planets and punish them according to their karma. And during that conversation, they describe the various qualities of the holy name and how uh, the Yamadudas could not take Ajamil because his sins had been freed. So he was given another opportunity to live. He didn't go back to Vaikuntha at that moment, but he was freed from death. At least Yamaraj and, Yam and Yamadudas could not take him. So at that time he repented, oh, I've lived such a sinful life. 
I must change my ways. Now I've heard the Vishnu do this. I have Sadhu Sangha. I'm hearing this Kata, this Hari Kata. I've become purified and I understand what is my duty now. I'll rectify myself. And with a repentant attitude, he went to Hari Lord. And there he took Sadhu Sangha, performed bhajan, and at the end of his life, he perfected himself and went back home, back to God. Thanks. Thanks. If anyone may chant Hare Krishna at the time of death, anyhow, if none of us, death will not come. And again you can have chants like Ajami. And if you are chanting pure Shuddha name at once to Guru Vrinda, Guru, and with love and affection, in the guidance of Rupa Goswami, then not to even go look or direct to Yuna. So you should chant and remember Krishna. After that he told how Jai Vijay was very high class of associate of Naya. Narayan has fulfilled all his desire, but he wanted to fight and to test. So at once, this came that anyhow, if you will be damned, even we will fulfill the desire of my Prabhu. At once, Krishna inspired Chatopasan, and they came and they checked him not to come to the Narayan and they cost. And then when Krishna took his Maya, or began to learn how, why we had that. But for three gen lifetime. Lifetime. Hmm. Oh. They first began Hrinakashtu Hrinaksha, then Raman Kumkar. And in third, Dansabhakra and Sishpa. And by Krishna or Devi. They were totally. And, and they went to Nabai. Here, in this story, he told Pralam Maharaja. In brief, you should tell. His charitra and his last teachings. Maharaj had appeared, who would be the very cause of his downfall before he started his uprise. 
So Krishna is very intelligent. So then, while he was awaiting austerities, Indra and the Devatas, they came and they kidnapped the wife of Hiranyakashipu because they thought, now she's pregnant, another demon will come in her womb, so kill him before he's born. But Nadrishi came there and he told them, oh, this is not a demon in the womb of uh, Kayadu, he is a great devotee. So they did Parikrama of that great devotee and Pranam and they left to the heavenly planets. Then Nadrishi, he took the wife of Irani Kashiku, Kayadu, to his ashram, that is at Narad Kund. And then he told Harikata to her for 60,000 years. But after that she forgot everything. But the child who was in the womb, hearing Harikata for 60,000 years from Narad, how qualified he would be after hearing for 60,000 years. So when he was born, he was a, a great devotee. So in the meantime, Hirani Kashipu, he did his austerities and Lord Brahma appeared to him and said, I give you a benediction. What do you want? He said, I want to be immortal. And Brahma he said that, I myself am not immortal. Ask for something else. Then he gave me the benediction that I will not be killed in the day or the night, in the, any month, or if I should not be killed on the land or in the air or in the sky or by any weapon or by any human being or animal or any cre creature created by you, which is everyone in the whole universe. And in this way, he asked for all of these benedictions and he thought that when they all add up together, it's the same as being immortal. So then Brahmaji, he gave that benediction and went away. And then he and Kashiku began his reign of terror. At once he attacked the heavenly planets, he kicked Indra out from his throne. All the demigods ran away and were hiding here and there in the universe. And for sitting on the throne of Indra, he began to control the whole universe. Even though he was drunk, intoxicated, his eyes were rolling. But still, he reversed the, mm, all the karmas. If you do pious activities, then a bad reaction will come. And he made it that all the uh, plants and fruits come from the ground without even, to, even doing any work. In this way, he made a complete chaos throughout the whole universe. He was so powerful. So, his wife had given birth to a child, only five years old, Prahlad. And he was going to school. And he ran Kashipu. He wanted to. He had so much affection, attachment attachment to his child and his the mother of Prahlad dressed him, bathed him, decorated him and brought him before his father. So Hirani Kashiku called, oh my son please come and took his son in his lap and he was smelling his head and tears of parental affection came from in his eyes. He had so much attachment. So I had to be attached to your own family members. This is not uh, necessarily the quality of a great devotee, even a great demon, such as even the Kashiku, he has this quality also. So, he said, oh my dear son, can you tell me, what is the best thing that you have learned at school? So then, Prahlad Maharaj, he said, Tat sadhu manye asura vaya dehinam sada samudvigna diyam asapreha Itvatmapatam riyamanda kupam Mano Kachamyat Harima Sayita. Oh, best among the demons, Asura Vajra. Here in Kashiku is hot, so the prime. Oh, the best among the demons. The best, the best knowledge I know is this that Sadasma Vigna Asat Diham Praha. Diham Asat Praha. Those who have accepted the physical body and mind to be the self are always embarrassed by one difficult situation, embarrassing situation after another. But with Vigna, many, many disturbances. Therefore, what should one do? One should give up the bodily conception of life, which is epitomized by attachment to wife, children, family and society. Why? Because it's Griyamanda Kupam. It's like a dark well. Once a traveler was wandering in the forest and there was a well, disused, and grass had grown over it. And he came there and he fell through the grass and went down the well. As he was falling, he caught the branches, two branches of a tree that were hanging in the well. And now he saw that at the bottom of the well, some snakes, they raised their hoods and they're ready to bite him and kill him. He looked at the top and a tiger was there, licking his lips and waiting to eat him also. And he was hanging from two branches. 
But from the sides of the well, two rats came out, one black and one white. And they came and they began to chew on the branches that he was hanging from him. So death and danger was all around him. And at that time, in the tree above, there was a beehive. And from shaking the tree, some honey began to drip very close to where he was hanging. So he noticed that honey was drinking, so he extended his tongue and one drop landed on the tip of his tongue. Hmm. How nice. Like this. So, this story, it seems to be funny, but actually it's not funny, it's very, very serious. What does it mean? It means that those who are in the bodily conception of life, attached to their family members, they are fallen into a dark well of material attachment. Just as this man had fallen in a dark well. Everywhere there is danger. At the bottom, so many snakes, Many problems come in this life, one after another, we cannot check them. And death is waiting for us. He's hanging from two branches. This, these branches represent his pious and impious activities. His punya karma and papa karma. Our life is composed of these things. But two rats, one black and white. Black rat means night and the white rat is day. Each day and each night that passes is eating away at our uh, at the reactions to our activities, punya karma and pap karma. And when they have been exhausted, our prana, the karma connected with this body, what will happen? Then we must die. But in the middle of all this danger and calamity, there's a drop of honey. A drop of honey comes. He tasted with his tongue that drop of honey. What is that? That is the material affection of one's relatives in this world. When our children say, oh daddy, mommy, mommy, then even though the whole day was completely hellish from beginning to end, or when a child will say, oh daddy, daddy, mommy, mommy, then we forget everything and think this world is wonderful. If your brother people tell you, I love you, you are so wonderful, then we will think, yes, I am great. This person is intelligent, they are the only one in the world who recognizes my qualities. Even if they abuse you for the other 23 hours and 55 minutes of the day, oh, one sweet word, forget everything. So this is a honey. So Prahlad Maharaj says, all in this world are in this predicament, so what should be done? This dark well is what? The Atma part. It blocks the progress of the soul. The soul cannot grow, he cannot evolve, he cannot go towards God. Therefore, one should leave this situation at once. And, Vanam Gato Yad Harimashweta. One should go to Ban, Brindaban. One should go to the forest. To go to the forest means what? To go to Sadhu Sangha. Have the association of pure Vaishnavas. And in their association, under their guidance, Yad Harimashweta, take shelter of the lotus feet of Hari. When Virani Kashipu heard this, he was surprised. He looked at the teachers of Prahlad Maharaj. He said, so the good intelligence of children is spoiled by bad association. It seems that some of those Vaishnavas, then they have been coming into the palace in disguise. And by their association, his intelligence has become polluted. So we take him away and educate him in the real values of life. That means politics, this diplomacy and how to collect money and be powerful and collect reputation. So Sangha and the market, they gave their words, but we'll take care of him, don't worry. And they took Balad away and they began to educate him in materialistic values. After some time, again, the mother of Hirani Kashiku, the mother of Balad, brought her son to Hirani Kashiku and again he took his son in his lap and affectionately embraced him and said, oh, can you tell me, what is the best thing that you have learned? This time, Prahlad Maharaj, he said, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Svaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam Iti Pum Sakita Vishnu Bhaktis Chandava Lakshana Kreti Bhagavatya Dathanam Yedita Muttamam So, without any fear, and very politely, he said to his father, I think that a person who has surrendered completely where? Itipum Sarvata Vishnu. Unto Vishnu, 
But there are two Vishnus. One is a Vishay Bhagavan, and other Ashay Bhagavan. First take shelter of Ashay Bhagavan, that means she grew. Afterwards one can realize Vishay Bhagavan, she, Krishna. One who has surrendered himself unconditionally at the lotus feet of Guru. And after that, he engages in Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, hearing, chanting, remembering, etc. He is the most learned person. It is understood that he, is, uh, he has understood that all the essence of life. So here Prahlad Maharaj said, first surrender, then hear, chant, remember. If one is hearing, chanting and remembering, but is independent and whimsical and not surrendered to the lotus feet of Sadhguru, then his hearing, chanting and remembering, it can never be called bhakti. It is only a pass, only drama, only fusho. So when Hirani Kashipu heard this, or oh, then he pushed his child from his lap, he said, if any part of the body becomes diseased, then what should you do? Oh, you have to cut it off. So though he is like part of my body, he should be cut down, take him away and kill him. So then the gods came and took Prahlad away and they tried to kill him. They tried to give him poison. They put him among deadly snakes. They tried to throw him under the feet of stampeding elephants. They threw him from the tops of mountains in many ways. But it, everything failed. Even Hirani Kashipu's sister, Holika, tried to catch him in a fire. But she herself was killed and Prahlad Maharaj he was safe and sound, only chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama. Chanting the name of Krishna, he was untouched. Then, Hirani Kashipu became very worried. He was so afraid. He thought, what is this? If I can't kill him, then perhaps he will kill me. And when he was worried, Sanda and Amarka, the two teachers of Prahlad, the sons of Shukracharya, they told him, don't be worried, our father is away now. But just soon he will come back and he is very learned, he will think of a solution. So then the, again Prahlad went to school. So when the school was going on, his behavior was good so the teachers made him the class monitor. And when they went for their break, they told him look after the other students. Then the teachers went away and when the cats away, mice would play. So all the children began to play around. But Prahlad March called them, oh my dear friends, please listen to me. I have something to tell you. <coughs> we don't waste your time playing around. You should take up the process of devotion to God's spiritual life. The children said, Oh, Prahlad, we're kids now. So we just want to play and we'll do bhajan later when we're old. <laughs> so Prahlad Maharaj, he said, This policy is not good. Why? Kaumara acharek prakyodamam bhagavatan hitam dula bhamanava janma Yadatta apya druvam artadam. Kamara acharya prakyo. Those who have prakya, intelligence, they will practice bhakti from the beginning, from the very beginning of their life, from childhood. Why? Because this life at most may be 100 years. And of 100 years, then, or oh, 50 years will be gone, only lying in bed and dribbling. <laughs> Like a dead body doing nothing, completely wasted 50 years. And then 50 years are left. Out of this first 10 years, children, they have no developed intelligence and discrimination, only playing around. Next 10 years, education. Go to college and university and become qualified to have a very good job as a doctor, lawyer, accountant or something. And then after that, then you have to work. And you, at the end of your life also 20 years, from the age of 80 to 100. Then you have no energy for singing, dancing, and doing kirtan, and serving the lotus feet of Guru. So these years are also lost. And in the middle, how much time? A very little time, only a few years. And in those few years, you have to get a house, a car, and a computer, and TV, and refrigerator, and microwave, and a PC player, and iPod, and many things. <laughs> and that time will be completely lost also. So therefore, from the beginning, if you think that you'll do bhajan at the end of your life, then what will happen? Yes, you can do bhajan at the end of your life and you'll take your mala and you'll remember your house, your furniture, your car, your animals, your children and all those things in which you are absorbed for your whole life. How you chant? So from the beginning, one should do bhakti. When his friends heard this, because Prahlad is so powerful, he has so much shraddha and realization, they were influenced, so they asked him, Oh, Prahlad, how can we do bhakti? 
So Prahlad Maharaj said, Guru Su Susraya Bhakta Savala Abdapanena Cha Sangye Nasaru Bhakta Nam Ishwara Radhanena Cha If you want to do bhakti, then it begins here. Guru Su Susraya Bhaktiya. First, take shelter of lotus feet of Sadguru and Su Susraya. It means to hear very carefully with honor and think, I will follow what my Gurudev is telling. Hmm? And also, with a mata, with possessiveness for the lotus feet of Guru. Guru is my saviour and my nearest and dearest friend. And in this mood, Guru Susrasya Bhaktya Savalapya Paninacha. If anything will come in your life, any money or reputation or anything, take everything and keep it at the lotus feet of your Gurudev. Don't keep anything for yourself. And more than that, Sangye Nasaru Bhaktanam Ishwara Aradhanenacha. If you want to do the Aradhana of Ishwara, then Sangye Nasaru Bhaktanam. One should try to associate with Sadhus, those who are more advanced than oneself. They will give inspiration of how to understand the heart of your Guru Bhada Padma and serve him according to his Manovishta, innermost heart's desire. So then, all the friends of Gulad Maharaj, they were inspired and they wanted to take up. Bhakti, accepting Pulad Maharaj like a guru. Or oh, what should we do? Or oh, you should all chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama. And the tumultuous sound of ecstatic children went all throughout the palace and entered into the ears of Hiranyakashipu. What is that? They are singing the names of that person who murdered my brother? I kill, I'll kill them. And he was very angry. He took his sword and immediately went to that place. Hmm? And he approached Black Maharaj with his sword. And he said, How dare you defy me? Don't you know who I am? When I raised my eyebrows, all the demigods run away in fear. Hmm? I am so powerful. How dare you defy me? Where do you get your power from? Black Maharaj said, I get my power from the same place from which you get your power and everyone derives their power. From Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then Hiranyakashipu became even more angry, furious. He said, oh really? So